Hello everyone, and thank you for inviting me to present uh, the National Academies about this work on hyperspectral virus detection in vineyards. I'm Luca Brillante and I'm Associate Professor in the Department of Viticulture and Enology at Fresno State. And the title of this talk is Empowering Autonomous Virus Detection in Vineyards, Hyperspectral Vision Systems, Bridging Science and Industrial Application. This uh, talk will uh, review the uh, work of the Hypervid project. We'll go into the detail of the basics of hyperspectral imaging, and then we will present uh, application to virus detection in vineyards, and I will uh, summarize the main performance results. And I will conclude with a recapitulative and a perspectives. The Hyperbit project started uh, operationally in 2020 and is currently ongoing. Uh, it's, it's an acronym that stands for Hyperspectral Virus Detection in the Vineyard. Uh, we, as cooperators um, from industrial standpoints, we have had uh, Bronco Wine Company and San Superi Estate as of now. And we are currently expanding to other partners. And as universities, the partners involved were uh, Fresno State, which leads the project in association with uh, Cornell University and particularly Dr. Mark Fuchs and uh, the University of California Agriculture and Natural Resources uh, with uh, Dr. Monica Cooper. The founding came from the CDFA, the USDA, the California State University Agriculture Research Institute or CSURI and the F3 or Fresno's Merced Future of Food Innovative Initiative. To summarize uh, the basics of hyperspectral imaging, I will start by describing what remote sensing is. It's just the measurement of some property of an object by a recording device that is not in physical contact with the object. So if we take the electromagnetic radiation of the sun that impacts against a leaf of a grapevine, in our case, that will be the amount of light incident on, on the leaves. A portion of that energy will be absorbed and used for photosynthesis. A portion of that will be reflected, and a portion of that will be transmitted or passed through the leaf. Of course, uh, we are currently working with the reflected portion, and um, we are working with passive devices. That means that we use the energy of the sun uh, for uh, um, as a source of energy. Why are we interested? Is because if we uh, we know that diseases can affect uh, the biochemical and uh, biophysical uh, properties of the plants, changing their optical signatures, and so an healthy leaf will have a different reflectance respect to an infected leaf. And this difference could actually be recorded in different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum through a camera sensors, which is uh, what we have been using and what hyperspectral cameras are. Now, what are in particular hyperspectral cameras? If we consider, um, you know, any um, digital device for taking pictures, as what we have on our phones, for example, we normally acquire information only into three specific bands, which are the red, green, and blue, or RGB uh, color codes, which roughly corresponds to 16 million different combinations, unique different combination of colors. So by combining just these three uh, bands, uh, yeah, different intensity or uh, from zero to 255, so therefore in eight bits. We can have a complete representation of all the nuances that we can see through our eyes. When we work with uh, multispectral data, we expand the number of bands, not only to have three uh, different color coding, but a larger amount, which is still into the... Uh, into a limited amount and also the chunk of lights if we want uh, that are taken into consideration are fairly large 
Um, yeah, the difference is that we start also acquiring information into uh, regions of the electromagnetic spectrum that we not normally observe with our visible eye, eyes, such as in the near infrared, for example. However, the reconstruction of the electromagnetic radiation remains discrete and it's uh, uh, in some, somewhat incomplete. With electro with hyperspectral data, the electromagnetic radiation instead is rebuilt in a quasi continuous way because we acquire a very large hundreds of bands, a very narrow chunk of lights, and so at that point we can actually re rebuild the, um, in a quasi continuous way the electromagnetic radiation. Now, if you look at the electromagnetic radiation uh, into um, uh, 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 the electromagnetic reflectance of uh, um, of a of a grapevine leaf. We go in this case from on the x-axis. We have different wavelengths. We go from from 400 to 2500 nanometer. On the y-axis, we have the reflectance. In uh, um, the visible uh, uh, area, which is actually the focus of this study, uh, together with the near infrared, we have the in uh, information related to chlorophyll functioning, particularly to leaf pigments. But uh, in the near infrared, we have information in uh, the cell structure. Uh, in the short wave infrared, we have information regarding water content, but also regarding leaf biochemicals, such as cellulose, sugar starch, protein, lignin, and so on, particularly COH combination. And so we, uh, at the beginning of the Hyper-V project, we actually worked into the visible and near infrared, roughly from 400 to 900 nanometer, while now we are actually working into the shortwave infrared domain as well. Uh, the uh, hyper -V project started in, with multiple steps. Uh, we worked first into uh, control conditions in the laboratory. So we have uh, you know, a dark cabinet with uh, a specific illumination and we work with detached leaves. And in this section, we mostly work with uh, uh, visible information. In, uh, then we brought the cameras into the field and we mounted that in uh, on a tripod. So we're working with still uh, cameras and we acquired images of the full canopies. And then we work with aerial imagery uh, from a drone. The first part of the work has been completed and was published last year. The second part of the work is about to come out on computers and electronics in agriculture. And the third part of the work will be uh, coming up, uh, hopefully, uh, toward the end of this year. So all three um, components of this work, they actually use the same um, structure. So we uh, acquire data into the field. For each single uh, vine that we acquire images from, we actually also sample leaves for the analysis of the um, virus through molecular diagnosis or PCR. And this is a very strong difference respect to uh, similar works in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, on the topic where we are not actually building a system based on visual observation, but we are actually building a system against molecular diagnosis. And we are also comparing the performance of the machine um, or the sensing system with the, com with the performance of an expert assessment. So the leaves go to the laboratory for PCR analysis, as I said, and the images, they go to uh, the lab for uh, further processing uh, through computational systems. For in the control condition, we have a data set of roughly 500 uh, samples, both uh, uh, PCR sensed, tested, and uh, imaged in the, in the dark cabinet. On the tripod conditions, we have roughly 700 samples, and on the drone, roughly 300. And then uh, the machine learning model that is built again on the hyperspectral imagery uh, in, in order to predict the results of the PCRs and uh, uh, then compare to classification, both on the images and in uh, the field from uh, a couple experts. 
In the dark conditions, we actually also attempted to differentiate between multiple different viruses. So we had in this data set, uh, non-infected, red blotch, leaf roll, and co-infection of both leaf roll and red blotch. And uh, it is very hard, you know, these images here are uh, Fairly, uh, they are, are the ones showing the some some of them are the ones are some of the images showing the strongest symptoms, but otherwise they tend to be uh, very mild. And actually, we also sampled across multiple dates. Uh, therefore, the symptoms are at the at variable levels of expression. Uh, the expert accuracy uh, um, with uh, this data set is roughly fifty percent. Uh, while a deep learning system based on convolutional neural networks actually achieves an 87% when the symptoms are visible and 86% when the symptoms are not visible. Uh, the distinction of red blotch with leaf roll sees that most of the uh, samples are predicted as leaf roll, also because leaf roll was more abundant in this data set with respect to red blotch, but also because red blotch has the tendency to have milder symptoms, and so it's actually harder to predict. And, uh, um, and uh, the co-infection uh, has the lower accuracy. If we uh, look instead at the spectra uh, into the visible and near infrared uh, from 500 to 900 nanometer, we see that uh, here in uh, uh, the green line, we have the average uh, 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 reflectance of the not infected samples. On the red, we have the average of the infected sample and the ribbons are the standard deviations. So you can see that the simple the samples on, on and these are data on the tripod. The samples are very similar or very close to one another. There is not a very strong difference. So there are nuances that needs to be um, uh, uh, analyzed. And in particularly in the green domain, we have a larger amount of refracted uh, light um, from the not infected samples. And the um, infected samples instead, they reflect more in the red domain and into the red edge. So this is actually uh, consistent with, obs uh, 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 with uh, consistent with the, the visual symptoms where we normally see the canopy progressively becoming red, more red. Even in this case, we actually acquire data over multiple dates, and so at different level of expressions. And so we uh, have the ability of differentiate uh, no visible symptoms with 75% accuracy through a PLSDA model that can only use five bands of 16 nanometer width, while the expert on the RGB images only achieve 54% accuracy, which is normal because at this point we don't see the symptoms yet. When we compare the symptoms uh, after variation in multiple dates, not only at harvest when the symptoms are more expressed, but in multiple dates, we have an accuracy of 76.6% with an SVM model that uses uh, 18 bands, also a 16 nanometer width. And we have compared, I don't go into the details here, but besides comparing multiple machine learning models, we also have compared multiple dimensionality reduction algorithms, different ways to reduce the noise and bump up the signal. And so uh, uh, the 16 nanometer actually seems to be the ones that on our um, multiple essays has given the largest uh, uh, performances. The expert with RGB images is a 78.6% and the expert in the field is a 75.3%. And so, um, as you can see, the uh, machine learning models, uh, of course, outperforms the expert before the expression of the symptoms and is comparable uh, to uh, the expert performances after symptom expression. We also realized as we uh, were acquiring multiple uh, data in, uh, um, uh, as we were acquiring uh, uh, data in multiple time from uh, before the symptom expression during uh, the, the 
uh, um, the, the, the symptomatic expression of the symptoms are, are multiple steps until uh, harvest, that when the symptoms are not visible, we actually have a larger amount of difference into the near infrared. Uh, while in uh, when the symptoms are visible, then the difference into the near infrared attenuates and we are, have larger difference into the red area and the red edge. And so uh, this is also particularly important to understand if we want to develop systems that can be used multiple, you know, at, if, over a longer uh, and extended period of time. So therefore more operationally capable in, in production, that we probably need to focus on different uh, areas of the spectrum depending on the time of the season. Uh, we attempted a multi-class classification in this case where we had three classes instead of only having uh, infected and not infected. We had um, non-infected, uh, visibly infected, and non-visibly infected. Those are the ones that the expert classify are not expert, are not uh, and are not infected from a visual standpoint, but they come out positive at the PCR results. And so overall here, the accuracy is roughly 71%. We uh, have a higher accuracy into the, um, uh, the um, classification of the visibly and non-visibly infected categories because of the ability of working on different regions of the spectrum or uh, giving the machine learning model the ability to differentiate these two classes and, and uh, utilize different uh, regions of the electromagnetic radiation. Now, finally, the results on the drones. Um, we uh, roughly have 200, we roughly, we have 264 binds sampled, 122 were non-infected, 142 were infected with red blotch. So this is per spectral imagery from a drone and uh, with uh, a pixel uh, accuracy of roughly seven, uh, um, millimeter and uh, very balanced data set. Uh, well, in this case, we acquire a limited number of bands, only 40. Uh, this is a limitation of the hyperspectral camera that we use for this purpose. Then we, cle we clean up the, 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 um, the spectra and uh, we interpolate over a larger amount of uh, wavelengths and uh, utilize a smoothing filter. Compare different machine learning algorithms. In this case, the imagery was only performed one time at harvest, the time of maximum symptomatic expression. And here we got back to have the maximum performance that we observed into uh, control conditions because we do not confuse the model with milder uh, symptomatic expression, but we only go there one time when the symptoms, when the leaves are red, when the symptoms are the most expressed. And if we compare the accuracy with the expert, the expert had roughly 83.6% accuracy on this data set. And so overall we have comparable or superior accuracy. Uh, but if you look at the confusion matrices here, we see that the, um, on the left, we have the expert performances. On the right, we have the machine learning performance. We see that we have slightly higher false positive with the model, roughly 10%, respect to the expert, the dust 8%. However, we have a very strong lower false negative with the model, 17%, respect to the expert, 24%, which makes the overall higher accuracy of the uh, system respect to expert assessment. If you look at the importance of the different bands, uh, we see that the green, the red, the red edge, and the near infrared have uh, the most important accuracy, which opens up also to think that it's possible to have very simplified sensors uh, if we only use uh, um, if we only if we go at the right time during the season. Uh, we also applied an inv the uh, uh, inversion of a radiative transfer model or the prospect model in, in order to estimate uh, what the hyperspectral imagery uh, images really see. And so we can see that we have an estimation of the chlorophyll concentration. And so uh, 
the uh, not infected vines have a higher amount of chlorophyll respect to the infected, as well as higher amount of carotenoids. So the overall, the photosynthetic apparatus is in better shape respect to the infected vines. Of course, what we have is that we have higher amount of anthocyanins into the infected or red color compounds respect to the not infected ones. Now, if I summarize the different performances in control conditions, uh, in all models, we always have higher or similar accuracy respect to expert assessment when we compare the hyperspectral sensing with expert visual assessment to molecular uh, testing. The machine learning model uh, reached an accuracy of 87% uh, percent in control condition, and similar accuracy is from a drone at harvest the time of more, a higher symptomatic expression. It's harder to have a higher accuracy, so high accuracy when we actually focus in the vineyard on a time of variable expression of the symptoms. And so if we expand the sensing uh, campaign from uh, uh, pre-verizon or uh, at the onset of verizon all the way to harvest. <coughs> And uh, it's important that we try to simplify the uh, hyperspectral uh, uh, sensing in order to build an operational tool uh, based on a limited number of, of bands that grower scale directly use. Uh, and upcoming complication will uh, further expand on the results that I presented. They will come out this year. And uh, what are we actually working on? Thanks to uh, uh, late, the latest grant from the California Department of Food and Agriculture, Pierce Disease Glass Wing Sharpshooter Board. We are working on developing systems for presymptomatic vines and white varieties, particularly white varieties are um, an important target for us at the moment because there have been no work at all on these varieties and it's very hard uh, to assess visually uh, their infection. We are also working with a full range uh, handled spectral radiometer in order to um, understand which region of the electromagnetic radiation is actually the most sensitive to the virus infection. And we're combining that with the uh, chemical analysis of leaf metabolites. Also to try to understand the fundamental of the uh, spectral signature. And uh, we are uh, go, trying to go more and more toward an operational tool. And so we are expanding our uh, uh, capability to uh, uh, varieties that we have not currently worked on and new vineyards in order to see what possible uh, confounding factors needs to be accounted for in order to um, uh, allow the growers to use this kind of sensing for their uh, assessment needs. Thank you uh, to all the people that have worked uh, over the years on this project, um, particular to Dr. La Roche-Pinel, which is leading uh, the work uh, in, in the lab, but also all the students that have collected or analyzed or managed the data information to all the cooperators over the years. And if you want to know more about what we are doing, you can connect through this QR code. Thank you for your attention. I look forward to your questions.